Welcome to the final part of installing the L2 LED light algae scrubber from Turbo's Aquatics. Just last week we installed the algae scrubber on the customer's tank. This week we're going to test for nitrate and phosphate. I did follow up the other day with the customer just to make sure the unit was working properly and that there was nothing I needed to be prepared for to address and his comment was how impressed he was by how clear and algae free the tank was. I find that surprising since it's only been a week, but you never know. The reality is what we're going to do today, as I mentioned, is test the water for phosphates uh, and nitrates so that we have a, a baseline to start from. Uh, in addition, we're going to go ahead and clean that algae screen, uh, which will be interesting to see how much algae may have grown on there in the first week. So let's stop goofing around and let's get to work. Well, here's our weekly reef tanks, and here's the one we place the scrubber on. Yeah, it's not as clear as I uh, interpreted over the phone, but uh, maybe I was a bit of wishful thinking on his part, but it's also positive thinking. Um, everybody seems to be swimming around this morning. Uh, there's still the kind of pseudo-typical amount of algae on the glass, not that I really expected it to be much less. Let's see here. There is our scrubber running. Everything's still passing water through. I don't see any standing water around or sprayed water. One thing I am interested in is those radiators are, I wouldn't say cool, but you can feel there's a little warmth there, but nothing as extreme as I imagined it was going to be. All right. So it appears as though everything's working as it's supposed to. Um, let's go ahead and uh, get our test kits out and test the water and get a baseline as to where we started and from there we can determine down the road how effective the uh, algae scrubber is going to be or is. I will be using my Seachem brand multi-test nitrate and phosphate test kits today. They're inexpensive and fairly accurate. The tests themselves consist of adding reagents to samples of the aquarium water. The result is a graduated color change that occurs. So while I wait for those test results to uh, do their thing down there, I think we want to go ahead and actually turn the system off, the scrubber, and remove that uh, screen from inside there. We'll do this for two reasons. One, to see how well our system is set up. In other words, unplugging the cord, how easy is that? Uh, loosening that union fitting, uh, and then trying to get the screen out of the top of the scrubber, which there was a, a little narrow uh, on space there. Um, also want to see what uh, kind of growth has occurred on the screen. This being my first time servicing this particular brand algae scrubber, I don't know exactly what to expect, so each step is taken cautiously. While I've worked on other versions of algae scrubbers, the fact that I only see this one once a week and it's in someone else's house is always a concern. Well, you can see here, there's a little bit of algae on the screen, not a tremendous amount there. Uh, that'll easily be scrubbed off or washed off, uh, so for one week, uh, I was expecting a bit more, but then again, it may take a little while for the scrubber to develop a, a thick coat of green algae there. I did locate another name badge here that I can use uh, to scrape the screen, so we'll take it over to the sink and we'll give it a quick screen, scraping as well as rinsing off. Really, there wasn't much uh, algae on there at all. 
which uh, down the road I may wish for again. Eventually this will become covered or caked with a dark green algae, possibly a brown caramely algae. And it's the algae that will grow on that screen that are absorbing the nutrients, taking the nitrates and the phosphates out of the water. So let's go ahead and put this back in, reassemble the unit, and then we can start servicing the tank. Even though there wasn't much algae growing on the screen, it did seem quite easy to clean. So let me get past the supervisors here and we'll place that back in the scrubber. So I'll go ahead and replace the screen back inside the scrubber. So I have to admit, I have not gone to the hardware store to get a replacement, a longer length of tubing, which is something I do need to do. But the screen seemed to have gone back in fairly easy. Dealing with the union fitting was fairly easy. Uh, unplugging the unit back there it was fairly easy. So uh, at this point, uh, the amount of maintenance is really minimal and doesn't seem to be that difficult at this point. So we'll uh, wait for the test results over here. And I think in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, service the aquarium and then we'll come back to those test results in just a moment. Before I get too involved in servicing the tank, I want to double check its salinity. Both of these tanks can sometimes have a surprising amount of evaporation, especially the smaller of the two tanks. And as you saw in the previous parts, I add the new seawater to the system prior to extracting it in this particular tank. It's not the most efficient version of a water change, but since both of these tanks are 10 plus years old, I find it best not to turn off the equipment or the water pumps for fear that due to their age, they may not come back on. And scoff if you must, but I've found that old equipment doesn't always respond well to changes. Have you made your plans yet to attend the Marine Aquarium Expo this coming April 6th and 7th of 2013? This is the largest aquarium consumer trade show in North America and a destination spot for marine hobbyists and coral frag enthusiasts. Held at the Orange County Fair and Event Center and featuring over 70 exhibitors, speakers, demonstrations, and a huge opportunity drawing. There's even a fin zone for entertaining young hobbyists. That's the Marine Aquarium Expo at the Orange County Fairgrounds this coming April 6th and 7th, Saturday 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Adults $15, senior and military only $10, and kids under 12 are free. For more information, visit MarineAquariumExpo.com. Come join us at the Marine Aquarium Expo. Meet the Tropical Fish Hobbyist Magazine has been the authoritative source for aquarium keepers since the first legendary issue rolled off the presses in 1952. With informative articles month after month about the fascinating world of freshwater aquariums, saltwater setups, paludariums, ponds, and more, illustrated in crisp detail by the world's top aquatic photographers, TFH covers it all. And now, with subscriptions starting at $13.95 and a mobile digital edition you can take with you wherever you go, TFH is your ultimate resource for all things aquatic. Hi there, my name's Jim Stein and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium, and the third is myfishtank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's myfishtank.com. 
So probably the most despised aspect of cleaning an aquarium is the actual wiping or cleaning of the algae that grows on the front or side or rear panels. In some tanks, this grows weekly. In other tanks, it may take two weeks before it becomes noticeable. And in some rare situations, four weeks. These two tanks, it grows weekly. And the reason for this really comes down to two things. The amount or the type of light on top of the tank, in this case, really the age of the bulbs on top of the tank, Keep in mind, these are old, former reef tanks. And the level of nutrients within the water. My hope by installing the algae scrubber is to decrease those nutrient levels that feed the algae. I don't expect to eliminate the algae growth, namely due to the fact that I've still got old bulbs across the top of the tank. But if I can see a factual drop in the water's nutrient level, then I will have made at least a serious decrease in the algae's food source. I did a moment ago use the word despised. And yes, it's true. Wiping algae is hard work. Yes, lifting five gallon jugs of water in both arms is hard work changing coral decorations or scrubbing coral sculptures is hard work but wiping algae is the hardest not only do i use different muscles when applying pressure to the inside panels of an aquarium to wipe algae but often it's with my left arm extended up at some odd angle and by the way if i never told you the reason for the tank tops I don't have to worry about wet sleeves all day long. And now it's time to uh, vacuum the gravel in the tank. We've got our two buckets and our siphon hose set up here and we've already added our 10 gallons of water. So let's go ahead and start vacuuming the gravel. While I did once many years ago resolve an algae problem, by stopping water changes. But that's only one tank in almost 20 years of aquarium service. Every aquarium service that I provide involves some changing of the water. Along with the water change, I'll also vacuum the gravel or the sand bed. My feelings are, in addition to the water change diluting levels within the tank, the vacuuming helps remove debris that would ultimately contribute to the nutrient level. So I find water changes beneficial. So let's go ahead and see what kind of results we have from the nitrate and phosphate tests. So we've allowed these tests to sit here for a little bit. We'll use this uh, color comparator chart here to try to come up with some uh, levels. Now the pink is the nitrate. Certainly it's not dark. Surprisingly, looks like it's about two parts per million of nitrate in the system, which is surprisingly low in that system. Phosphates, on the other hand, uh, it's kind of hard here to make the comparison, but I'd say anywhere between 1.5 and 2.0. So let's just call it two parts per million of nitrate, and let's just call it two parts per million, 2.0 parts per million uh, of phosphate in the system. So that's where we're starting at. And so that's the installation and the operation of the L2 LED light algae scrubber from Turbos Aquatics. I'm gonna go ahead and service this tank now make it a point to come on back for some future episodes and you can see the results as to how effective uh, the scrubber actually was on that aquarium and what results it actually achieved. Until then, keep on moving forward.